Discord, see how many Discord users they have, how many are actually active, because many of them are you know, bots. I look at their website, um, I look at their roadmap, I look at the first phase, and you know, sometimes the roadmaps aren't fully really mapped out. Uh, the first phase might be you know, the only one that's mapped out, so I look and say, would I be comfortable with just that one you know, being fulfilled? I look at the utility and I look at, you know, what is it? Is it good? Is it bad? Like, is it valuable? And is it sustainable? Because, you know, you can see all these lofty goals, but if it's not executed, then it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm also looking at the smart contract. I uh, definitely read the smart contract. Um, I've had once before where there's been spelling mistakes and uh, a couple other red flags and then it's been a rug. So luckily I, I could avoid that by, by looking at uh, the smart contract. Look at where the NFT is stored. You know, is, is that gonna be something that will be there in the future? Um, what else? I also look at things like um, IP rights. So if you see an NFT that has, you know, a dog wearing a Louis Vuitton jacket, don't buy it. <laughs> Unless they own the IP rights. Because if they don't, your NFT will get pulled from OpenSea and it will be worthless. Um, on the other side of IP rights is I always look to see do we have commercial IP rights as an owner or as a buyer because uh, sometimes you'll have IP rights that are just for personal use which means you can you know print your own t-shirt but that's about it um, but other ones like you know Ford 8 for example they give a, a license an irrevocable license where they can use their apes to do restaurants and cartoons and clothing lines so uh, those are some of the things I look at. And then also right before, this is really key, I look at, I don't, I don't mint right away, and I look at um, you know, how many mints are happening in real time. And you can see like if a project has 8,000 or 10,000 and you've only seen 300 minted in the first 30 minutes, that's definitely you know, kind of something to watch out. And then if you also look on OpenSea at that time, and you see that you know the price is the floor price is lower than the mint price. Obviously, that could be an issue. Now, that's not always an issue, but if you look at all these things as a whole, then you can kind of start seeing red flags like that. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> as you as you mentioned, like how social metrics are important. What I would like to add also is that. Um, First of all, there are like you can buy, you can easily buy followers on Twitter, right? So it doesn't really tell you much. But what you can't really buy is like what followers do actually follow you. Do you have like, or you as a as a project creator, do you have like any of your Vales followers? Do you have like any influencers following your account? If you do, that's like a very good sign for like. Um, anyone to, to mint that collection. And that's actually one of the things that's been really like requested from our community, from our users. So you can even find this one on NFT story. So feel free to check it out. Yeah, I think that's really key. I think um, like the engagement score. So, you know, looking at on mint day, if they say, hey, it's mint day, and they have 90,000 followers and only 300 react, or same on their Discord, 300 do a reaction on Discord, like that's a huge red flag too. So, good comment. Uh, so, you know, I went through all of that. One of the key items was utility, and I kind of just brushed over all of them. But, um, yeah, would you like to tell us a little bit about utility and, you know, how, how do you determine if it's valuable or not? Yeah, utility is super tricky. Um, I've worked with about 45 projects at this point providing marketing services via Twitter spaces. And the first question I always ask is, what problem does this solve? Because to me, that's what a business needs to be doing. And these are businesses and companies. When you take people's money, it's an exchange for something, it's a company, right? So you have to really delve into that. And there's been three real use cases that I've found. And the first is by far the strongest. And it's the only use case that I've been able to use to explain utility to people who aren't in Web3. And that is proof of ownership via a simpler method. Uh, best use cases for this that I've seen are real estate, trading cards, other simple non-fungible items that can be put into a wrapper. Uh, basically, what I'm getting at here is there's a lot of processes of selling items right now around the world that are very slow, meticulous, and difficult. Real estate's a great example. You have to go and get the deed, the title, back and forth, all the paperwork needs to get signed. That's a type of contract, right, which would be wrapped up inside of an NFT wrapper, put on the blockchain, and literally me sending that NFT to your wallet is now proof of ownership. 
You own that thing. You can prove it. You have it on there. That's a very simple concept. I also saw another great one with trading cards. Right now, think about the trading card market. It's one of the best appreciating assets over the last 30 years, but it is impossibly difficult to be a mass seller of these things for two reasons. The first is, where am I going to keep all these things? Right? They have to be rated in support and then kept in a fireproof place, waterproof place. Uh, they can't get dusty. When someone actually buys one, I have to go and get a mailer. I have to take it to FedEx. Right? It's a terrible problem. And what about liquidity? Where am I selling this? Like eBay, wherever else? They're not promoting it there. So I've seen companies that come in and will do things like, hey, we have a vault. We've gone ahead and bought a state-of-the-art system. You can send in your trading card. You can receive a pure digital scan, which is an NFT of ownership. And now, when you want to sell that, you can just send that NFT to someone. You, have, you skip the whole problem. You can enter it into the company's marketplace. You can enter into liquidity pools. So for me, the biggest example is proof of ownership because simpler methods to access the liquidity and transferring of ownership. Number two, I think comes in a little bit farther underneath. And that's going to be, uh, for me, really elite echelon communities, right? Um, I think community gets thrown out a lot, and it's tough to just join into something random, but there's really communities that I've seen that have brought insane access to people, right? When you're getting to the same room and same group chats and discords, at the end of the day, we can't deny it. There's massive access, and if you're talking to people that are whales, legends, you know, tons of experience, I can't say that there's not a lot of value within what you're doing there. And then the third is grouping together community resources to achieve something that you couldn't do on your own, right? So similar to Dow, similar to other circumstances. But you know, this isn't new. We've seen this in venture capital. We've seen this in other areas. I think it's just allowing people who are not accredited investors, who maybe don't have as much money, to have access to larger deal flow. So for me, it really comes down to proof of ownership, elite communities, and access to larger deal flow. I think everything else is kind of in a bit of a sorting pit and a mix, and it's all coming through, but you have to really ask yourself at the end of the day, what problem is this solving? Because if it's not solving a problem, it's not going to reach the mass scale that it needs to in order to really take off. So that's where I go with that. I would love to hear if anybody else has any thoughts on utility. I, I love it, yeah. Like you mentioned, like pretty much many use cases that um, people that are not that deep in NFT space um, struggle to understand. So we have a problem with that. Thanks, sir. All you guys. Yeah. So, um, David, I know you focused a lot on trading and then I, I believe you a more fundamental approach when thinking about projects, and we'd love to talk about that a little bit. But um, you focus on, say, trading, high frequency trading with the platform. So maybe you maybe you talk a little bit about what you think about when you think about, like, say, trying to split up NFTs and trading. <clears throat> well, yeah, sure. Um, when you, when you're planning to like invest in an NFT collection for for like long time, um, you probably look at different metrics um, compared to when you're like planning just to flip the collection, right? So rather than just checking the roadmap, um, doxing the team, you look at things like, is there enough liquidity in the collection right now? Um, will the floor price go down in the next couple hours? Um, are there any like are there like, many unique buyers in the last um, 30 minutes? Stuff like that. So you need like a different view on the data if you're planning to like do the like high frequency trading in NFTs. So basically, what you do how you like how how I approach it if I want to like do trading in NFTs I go to like trending view I, I want to see like what collections are tra like trending right now like where's the where's the liquidity what people are buying at this very moment so I open like that's like the, the landing page of NFT scoring basically. So you see like all the collections with like the number of trades that, that happened in the last like, based on like the period you select. But then you like see that there's enough buyers right now. So you might just like wanna jump in, you open the detail. But what I really look for right now um, is the, like how many, listings were created in the last um, 30 minutes, let's say, and how many NFTs from this collection were bought in the last 30 minutes. And based on that, you are able to like understand the sentiment of the market right now, and you understand like where the floor price might go, will it go up, will it go down, and you find it out based on like 
people buying basically because you can't easily fake the transactions. You can't like well you can but you would pay like high gas fees, you would pay also like the royalties, stuff like that. So so yeah, so you really care about liquidity, you care about like the floor price. Usually when I play, I don't really care about the roadmap, I don't care about the team because I just care about like what people feel about the collection. Yeah, I just kind of makes a lot of sense as well. Like, um, um, I, I'm not that much of a trader myself, but I, I think the landscape has changed a lot, right? Like, say, back in, say, July of last year, if you were, say, trading NFTs, I, I think it's very easy, it's not too difficult. But I think today, the level of sophistication um, in the NFT space has risen a lot, right? And I think if you really want to get an edge in terms of trading, especially flipping, um, you do need to rely on a lot of tools. Otherwise, you're always going to be behind uh, the other people. I'm not sure if you agree. Uh, exactly, like you, you said it, you said it great because there are already like many bots being created, they are like doing um, automated trading, there are like many institutions actually coming into the NFT space to like buy into collections. So right now it's about like the, the real time data, it's about like getting to data as fast as possible to get the edge in the market. So when I talk about like NFT collections, like most of the times 